Jeff, uh, what is the real cost of the loss of biodiversity? The, the, the real cost, the price we pay, is ultimately we lose the quality of, of our own existence, the quality of life, um, and we potentially impede our own survival. Uh, for example, amphibians, our planet is home to 6,000 amphibians. They have survived for 350 million years, yet we may lose half of all amphibians in this century. We've already lost 250 species. There are amphibians that I have featured in my programming that are now gone. Um, so we lose medicines. Uh, we lose partners in agriculture. We lose uh, the keystone species. Amphibians are critical to the overall health and balance of an ecosystem. We lose the ultimate indicator species. So they tell us something. They are the canaries in the coal mine. So when we lose creatures that have lived for 350 million years, that tells us that our own future is in jeopardy. But, um, you know, we are stewards of this planet. And, and the world we use today, we don't inherit from our ancestors, we borrow from our children. So we are literally robbing our children for the opportunity to have a fulfilling existence, and maybe even their own survival. Yeah, that, that's the, like you said, you, you, you said about your daughters, you're trying to do this for them, right? Uh, well, I want, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I never thought I wanted to have children, you know? And, and I often imagine my life, uh, before having children, I think I could have lived my whole life and never had children. But once you have a child, you wonder how you lived. They really, they rechange you. And the idea that my children could inherit a planet that was dying, it, to me, it's, it would be the ultimate failure of a parent. The, the, the number one job for your parent is to secure the next generation. That's what you do. You create the next generation, right? And you can have good food, good medicine, good schools, good police, good military, all the things we think to make healthy children. But we have to ask ourselves, with all this stuff, not just in the United States, look around the cities of, of, of uh, Brazil, go to Rio, go to London, you know, go to Los Angeles, New York, go to Mexico City, go to Japan. You'll see different cultures, different people. You'll also see, see something that all these countries share in common. For the first time in the history of human species, we're creating a generation that is less healthy than the generation before. Children are fatter. They need... I know, I know tons of kids that are on medication just to study in school. They have no connection to nature. And for me, that's my focus. And, and that tells us, we look at the frog as the indicator for survival of the planet. Well, if we look at we, we, we look at children, maybe they're the indicator of the survival of our species. Yeah, I see that. And uh, you said in your book, you pointed the most endangered species. Could be that uh, the most endangered one could be us? Eventually, because look, we're animals. We consume and we use. We need energy. We need plants and animals and we make medicines, we, we, we get our calories, and if we destroy our natural resources, if we warm up our planet through climate change, we destroy habitat that we sustain about, uh, for ourselves, ultimately we're punishing ourselves. And the last one, uh, what is the most precious adventure you lived during your quests? The most, uh, probably, well, I have Actually, we, I'm not going to say just because it's Brazil. One of my best memories was spending living for a month in the Pantanal. And every morning we'd get on our horses and we'd go for miles into the, into the grasslands looking for caiman and anaconda and having the most... And I always think of that, having a, this incredible adventure during the day, finding a big anaconda, and at night having a nice barbecue and a good, uh, good caipirinha, you know? It was perfect.